Welcome to Learn with Saeed. I'm Saeed Mahmoud. I'm just trying to set up the camera here. I think it's just about okay, but it's just dropping a little bit. And that way you can see the thing that is standing on. Uh, I think that's a little better. Yeah, sort of. Not really. <laughs> anyway, uh, the reason I'm live right now is I'm going to talk about phrases, idioms, and colloquialism. Now, what is colloquialism? Let me give you an example to begin with. Have you heard the term, let me make myself a cup of tea in the meantime. I'm going to make myself some green tea here, which is uh, this one. It's a Chinese green tea, as you can see. Uh, my um, friend from China, Jin Li, he brought me this one. It's a Chinese green tea. I don't know what it says. Maybe if there's anybody watching this video who can speak Chinese or read Chinese rather can tell me what it says but in here is just green tea so uh, have you heard the term go postal if somebody says that a person has gone postal what does that mean really it means somebody has you know gone really crazy and you know attack other people or kill some other people that kind of thing so, where does this come from? Well, as you know, in, um, in the United States of America, uh, there are some mass shootings have taken place, and uh, over time there are mass shootings that take place, gun violence from time to time. So, what happened is that from 1980s, mid-1980s to mid-1990s, there were a number of mass shootings that took place in post offices. Mm, there would be a post office worker who would go crazy for some reason and uh, obtaining a gun is not very difficult in the US so they would grab a gun and kill the colleagues and probably turn the gun on themselves or get killed by the police or something like that so from there the term going postal because it comes from the post office so the term going postal has uh, entered the colloquialism, the way people speak English in the North American region. So that's how an idiom or colloquialism gets started. Something that people say in order to mean a certain thing and eventually it sort of gains ground and other people starts understanding what that individual is saying and other people start saying it as well so eventually over time that sort of uh, gains some foothold in a certain area some region a country or even internationally it can happen as well so over time uh, that gets accepted in into the into the vernacular of the people so when that happens we call it an idiom so, for example, uh, it's basically all about how a language is spoken. In English, for example, uh, usually people would say, I'm going to have a cup of tea, not necessarily drinking a cup of tea. Now, drinking a cup of tea is not incorrect or wrong, but rather, when uh, people usually refer to this particular act, they say, I'm having a cup of tea. Also, if we talk about, um, let's say, dinner, now, somebody who is not a native speaker could easily make the mistake, not a mistake, but rather they could say that uh, I'm, I'm going to eat dinner, for example. I'm going to eat dinner with you, or would you like to eat dinner with me? But in all likelihood, a native speaker would say, I'm going to have dinner, or would you like to have dinner with me? So you see, that's the way a language is spoken. There are many other examples like this, um, where... People say a certain thing uh, and others understand wh why it is being said or what it means. Uh, but when uh, a, a speaker who is a non-native speaker who hasn't uh, learned English as a child or is not their first language, they uh, would usually use a different word or they would wonder why a native speaker is saying a certain thing the way they're saying. So, um, for example, uh, I grew up in a country, Bangladesh, where most people do not speak English. Uh, as children, we do learn English up to some extent in textbooks and things like that, but we don't really speak English as a language. 
Uh, so, and that's another thing I'd like to point out, that some of you think that if you don't learn English as a child, you don't really get to uh, be good at English in the future. That's a common misconception, as you can see that I'm able to speak English. I was not able to read or write or speak a single word of English until I was eight years old. So I didn't even go to school before I was eight. So at the age of eight, when I went to school for the first time, I had to take a, a, take a test to, and to, you know, to get admitted to the school. And I answered the portion Bangla, which is my native language. I did a bit of math, but uh, I could not read or write anything uh, of the English questions. I could only, uh, I remember reading the letter R. So I could read the letter R, that's all about it. And I couldn't, so I didn't pass the test. So my, eventually my father went there and requested the principal to take me in, so they did. But anyway, and until the age of 26, I lived in Bangladesh. Uh, and I studied in Bangla medium schools, meaning the medium of instruction in those schools were, where was Bangla. So uh, I learned English just as a, um, as a subject in school, but not as a language to be spoken on a day-to-day -day basis. But uh, obviously, as you can see, that I have learned English. Uh, so that can be done, and if I can do so, why not you? You can learn English as well. But anyway, uh, the point I was getting at was that uh, in Bangladesh, uh, I read that the word mad means someone who is mentally unstable, you know, uh, a mad person. But uh, later on, I realized that uh, that's not necessarily the only meaning of it. People, especially the native speakers, use that word differently. For example, uh, when I say, um, I'm mad about you. Okay, being mad about somebody or something means you're really passionate about that thing. I'm really mad about this particular cause, whatever the cause might be. So you are mad about something means you are really, um, you're really passionate about that. The green tea is okay, I'm not really mad about it, but it's okay, it's healthy. Anyway, uh, so, but interestingly, if you say mad at somebody instead of about, if I say I'm mad at you, means I'm upset with you. So uh, when a husband forgets, uh, for example, uh, the um, birthday of the wife, or the wife forgets the birthday of the husband, the person who feels upset can say I'm mad at you, meaning that I'm upset with you or I'm angry with you, you see. So when you are trying to learn English, it is important to learn how a particular language is spoken. So it is important to understand that um, any language uh, evolves and although the textbooks usually uh, fall a little behind because textbooks have to be standardized and have to, you know, especially when the textbook we're talking about is in a non-English speaking country, to get updated with the way people are speaking a language in, that, in their native lands, uh, it takes a bit of time. So when you learn something in school, it's highly likely that um, it, it could be a little bit outdated and people are probably speaking that particular language uh, overall in the same way, but they have already added other uh, phrases, idioms, and um, words to their um, to what they say on a day-to-day -day basis. So how do you learn that? I'm just talking about the issue, but I'm not suggesting a solution. So the solution is, you try to be friends with some native speakers of that language. You try to, um, it, it's, it has become much easier after the introduction of internet in the last 10, 15 years. And uh, people have access to internet in a lot of countries now. In every country, uh, a good portion of people at least have the privilege of using internet. So what you have to do is you have to find some native speakers of English. If not, then at least people who are better at you in that language, in English in this case, for example. So if you can find somebody who would speak to you on a regular basis and they're better at you in English, they can help you not necessarily teach you, but when you speak and you make mistakes and you see how they're using that particular language over time. So I'm just live. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, I'm just saying that, uh, yeah. So you automatically, over time, you pick up how uh, that person is speaking the language. So uh, you see that uh, when you say, for example, I'm going to eat dinner and the native speaker says, I'm going to have dinner, you know, without realizing in, after a while, you're going to start saying, I'm going to have dinner because that's how language works. You see somebody saying something and you know that they're a, a native speaker or a, a better speaker than you. 
So you gradually pick up those things. Uh, that's one way definitely of doing that. And also what helped me a lot is that I, uh, I watched a lot of movies and documentaries and news. Uh, very, you have to uh, spread it out. You, if, you cannot just watch or see one kind of thing. You have to spread it out into watching uh, movies, uh, news, and um, also, um, as I say, documentaries, because they have different type of uh, narratives in those uh, different types of films. So uh, you, if you do that, you would gradually pick up the different types of words, phrases, and idioms, as we started speaking about initially and uh, what is polite in a language and what is uh, considered rude in a language, for example, speaking without the word, uh, rather requesting something without the word please is considered rude in English, not necessarily in many other languages. That's just the way they speak and that's just the way English is spoken, so it could be different. So all of these things you pick up over time by using the language. And it is also a misconception that you need to be really good at a language to start speaking it. That's a misconception, and you don't really need to be very good at English to start speaking, but rather, if you understand what I'm saying right now, it means that you know English up to a reasonably good level, and you should start speaking straight away. So, I just wish you all the best, and hopefully uh, this video was helpful. This is my first live video, so in live videos, of course, if you make mistakes, you cannot uh, you know, slip of tongue, you cannot really go back and change that, so live videos are of that nature. So uh, I hope I've said things overall in a decent manner. So um, I, see, I will see you in the next video, and um, stay tuned, follow my YouTube and Facebook pages, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, I hope that was helpful.